You're watching BBN Game Day NCAA Tournament Preview, presented by Toyota. Welcome back into our BBN Game Day NCAA Tournament Preview Special. Now, our goal for this show is to get you ready for Kentucky's run in this upcoming tournament. But for Jacob Toppin, he spent the better part of this season trying to get right, not only for this time of the year, but for his own well-being. Jacob came into this season with lofty expectations, fueled by an off-season of hype surrounding the senior, his late-blooming brother, and his own stellar performances in the Bahamas, where he scored 17 points per game and shot 53% from deep. But life isn't just about expectations and whether or not you're able to meet them. It's also about balance, timing, and having the strength to ask for help. I've been thinking a lot recently about the story we did preseason. It brings me to a peace of mind. Uh, life can get hard sometimes, so mm -hmm. I kind of just try to go in my own world and try to just understand like all the good that's around me. The off day story, out taking our little walk together. You talking about how much you know nature means to you and how important that sort of alone time can be. Like it's just a space where like there's no judgment. There's just nothing here, just me and nature. And really, like I said, it's just bringing me to like a whole different like world where like I don't have to worry about any of the problems that's in my life. I don't have to worry about this or that. I could just focus on the now and the moment that I'm in. Obviously this season has been challenging and you've been pretty open about that. Yes, and part of that alone time uh, is understanding when you need to be alone and when you need people around you to support you. Early on in the season, um, obviously I reached a mental spot where um, I didn't need to be alone. Uh, being alone was just eating me from the inside. Honestly, I, I've, I probably reached rock bottom. There was no bottom uh, before this game. Look, at Missouri, I had him in my room and I hugged him and I said, do you know how much I love you and how much I want you to do well, but I can't do this for you and you got to get in a different frame of mind. But I was, I was messed up mentally. Um, I wasn't thinking right even when I was on the court. I wasn't fully on the court. So we had a talk before the Missouri game and uh, I think obviously it's not going to happen right away and we knew that. But he went into that game and what's the word above awful? So after the game, he actually called me back into the office and we had another talk. He was checking in on me. I was like, I'm OK, coach. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. Like, just keep trusting in me and I'll, I'll figure it out. So uh, I just try to focus on climbing back out of the hole that I was in. And uh, I took a step forward today. You know I'm the man. Yeah, yeah, coach. Toppin with an aggressive move. Hey, fatigue, that might get his own, though. In Toppin's first start in two weeks, he shot 67% from the field and exploded for a career high 24 points on the way to a 23 point Kentucky win. Toppin was named the game's MVP. It was certainly a step in the right direction, but he didn't take it alone. When you're in that space, you do just want to be alone. Right. It's easy to wallow in it. Yeah. And it's much harder to go out and say, okay, I need help to figure this out. People see um, asking help as a sign of weakness, but it's also a sign it, it's a sign of strength and a lot of people need to understand that so like that's what I did I asked for help now I'm in a mindset where like I put myself into this team and I'm not really worried about myself so it's kept me free from all the all the negativity that's um, in this world so it, it's it helps a lot having people around you who support you but success doesn't always happen in a straight line Toppin hit his stride in mid-January rattling off 12 consecutive games where he scored in double figures in five of those 12 games, he had double doubles. Then, senior night against the Commodores. Uh, I messed up on two plays, uh, I'll say that. And coach came at me and he, he aggressively like screamed, but he does that normally to me. So I'm not, I'm not saying that's anything about him, but I let my emotions get the best of me and I argued back and uh, I told him to take me out the game. And that was selfish of me, I, I let my teammates down. Um, I got to be better, especially as a leader. And in the second half, I tried to be better, but we still lost. So uh, this loss is definitely on me. John Calipari on the floor and not happy. Not happy with Toppin. Like I said before, my attitude in the first half, at the end of the first half, was what sparked their run and um, in the end made them win the game. So just put this loss on me, you can. You know, he and Cal got into it on the bench a little bit, and he felt as though that wasn't the right thing to do. He came and apologized to all the coaches and everybody. I just think he was disappointed. Disappointed that if he had played better, then we'd have had a better chance to win. I think that's the bottom line with Jacob.
people so often think about player coach and that that relationship has to be a certain way and it's whatever Thanks. you see on the court right? Yeah, right but it's so much different than that yeah uh, a lot of people don't see that uh I mean, in games, like you could see Coach Cal yelling at me all the time, but I know deep down he, he believes in me because he wants the best out of me. So I appreciate him for doing that. The amount of uh, pictures I see of him just yelling at me is hilarious because I think it's funny, but a lot of people think like he's just being mean. No, like that's just who he is as a coach. Like he wants the best out of his players. He knows I can take it. So uh, he's going to continue to do that. But like that's, like, that's what I need to get the best out of me. So like, I appreciate that. Jacob, you had a better second half, but I'm telling you, I took him out. I saw the week, and then the throw shoulder, you're out, I'm playing these other guys. And it takes good coaching to know that every individual needs something different. And exactly. for you, they know you can take it, right? right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's some players who can't take it, so you have to treat them differently. But for me, like, all the yelling and stuff, you just got to hear the message and just keep going. Like, I'm on him in the game now because he'll like to try to take his foot off the gas and act hurt. And I'm like, are you hurt? You need to come out? Your body language affects us. And he is playing so well. I'm just saying, why would you want to be that other guy? This guy, he's one of the best players in the country. Coach Cal helped me a lot tremendously. And he believed in me. And that helped me a lot. But off the court, he's always looking after us. He's always making sure we're good mentally, physically, spiritually. Like he's always looking out for his players. So uh, that's he, he's a big time coach for that. You could walk around, you could walk around these places and see people smiling, but it could be a fake smile and not understand what people are going through. So like a big part of what I do and what my mom's taught me is just be nice to everyone because you don't know what they're going through. And a lot of people, like I said, don't ask for help because they think it's a sign of weakness. So you just have to find ways just to be nice to people and understand like people are going through their own struggles and their own problems. So like if you see somebody who needs help, just help them, even if they don't ask message there from someone who's lived it and from someone who means it. Toppin was also assigned some extra responsibility this week. He and Lance Ware have both been officially named team captains for this tournament run, something Calipari says he's never done before, but that he wanted to emphasize as a team, they need Jacob to be a little bit more. So they also felt like they needed to put a little bit more responsibility on his plate. And of course, I want to say thank you to Jacob Toppin for being so open, not only in that interview, but throughout the whole season. I know it's meant a lot to a lot of people and hopefully helped someone out there as well. Now, I know we've talked a lot about the Cats tonight. This is BB and game day after all, but coming up after the break, we are diving into some more Providence talk. You're going to hear from head coach Ed Cooley right after this.